We'll move on to a sport you're a lot more comfortable with, and that's the. Sh- Hold on, I'm comfortable. With no, baseball. I know you're comfortable with baseball, <laughs> but you're a big hockey guy, and I appreciate yes. that because the Chicago Blackhawks made some roster moves similar to the Chicago Cubs, but in this form, they traded away some pieces. Now, I know how you feel about it, so let's discuss. Right. Brian Bickle, Table Teravine, and traded to the Carolina Hurricanes for a second round draft pick this year and a third round pick in 2017. Thoughts. First off, I think one of those picks was originally ours, and I think there, in some way it oh, got, it got crazy back to us. Oh, hockey's crazy with the moving parts. Um, so somehow we got our pick back. Um, first off, I understand the trade. I understand what Scotty Bowman's doing. Getting uh, Bickle off the books, his $4 million contract, and getting a guy in Ter- T- Tevo Teravainen uh, who really didn't hit his stride with the, 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 the Hawks. I mean, we saw some burst of it in the playoffs against the Lightning. We saw, you know, or, I'm sorry, last year in the playoffs, uh, especially in the Stanley Cup uh, against the Lightnings. Uh, Lightnings, Jesus, I'm, I'm <laughs> You're good, you're good. The Lightning. Uh, so obviously we saw his potential here, but then last year was kind of up and down, especially playing on the third line with a guy like Andrew Shaw. He wasn't really hitting his potential. So, I mean, I understand the trade of what I, mean, I understand the trade from a hockey sense and Scotty Bowman's vision, but I just I don't like the trade, mainly because you're getting rid of Bickle, which is fantastic. And I think that should have been done a long time ago. In hindsight, it's you know, 2020, and you definitely don't even sign Bickle to that contract. Yeah, it was a bad move. Yeah. Definitely a bad move. One of the worst moves of Scotty Bowman's no, tenure. No doubt. Uh, but you look at a guy like Tavo, and I mean, Tavo's going to excel in Carolina. I mean, this guy has so much potential offensively. He's so smart, but the thing with that was holding him back is, you know, you got the emergence of Panarin, you got Kane, Taze, Hosa, you got all these guys that are holding him back and not me- being able to move him up to an offensive line, and you're keeping him on a line with Shaw right. and, you know, Kruger and uh, all these guys like, you know, all, all Mixing the, and matching, yeah, now all we the got guys comfortable who, with the guy. Yeah, yep. Kind of are like defensive minded. So, he was never able to hit his stride. Now in Carolina, he'll be able to hit his stride. Uh, I just don't like the move because I, I love Tara Vine so much, and I see his potential, and I see how much how well he's going to do in Carolina. Yeah. I think the thing is, you look at it, and it's apparent. Just look at what happened with the White. Uh, I'm sorry, the Whites, the Blackhawks <laughs> roster up to this point, because you can tell that somebody's at the helm here, and he has say. And I'm talking about Joel Quenville. Joel mm-hmm. Quenville has proven to be a leader in his own sense, by saying, look, this is what I want. I'm a winner. I've won three cups, and I know what I want, and I know what I like, and if I don't like you, you're going to get out of here, and you're not going to play. Look at Now, it sucks because the Blackhawks were in desperate need of defensemen, right? And they moved, They made moves to acquire defensemen. But at the end of the season, in the playoffs, we saw Gustafson playing, which was uh, not very Run good. Run showed his face a couple Run times. Run Bland, bad. Yeah. Uh, TVR, he's okay. He'll probably develop into a second line defenseman. I like TVR. But he's nothing, nothing, right? They had Trevor Daly, Nick Letty. Now, I understand they, they had to move Letty because of his contract, mm-hmm. but th- those are just some simple examples of prior defensemen that. Joel Quenville just didn't care for, and he said, "All right, get him out." Well, it's I fine. don't think he was—he really didn't care about Letty. I mean, the thing with Letty is, it was—it was mainly that contract thing. And and the thing, if you look at Letty, I mean, I think if we don't sign Bickle, I think we sign Letty, which I fucking well, wish yeah, we did. Yeah, that's the thing. Yeah, I mean, I, I look at—I look at you know Quenville. Quenville's where it's set. I mean, look at guys like Brandon Peary, who's now on the Panthers. You look at a guy like Jeremy Morin. I mean, there's guys who had a lot of offensive potential who were moved, and I think Morin, Morin obviously helped because Morin really has not excelled or produced. And but now with the guy with Brandon Peary, he's been up and down, but so, he, show, he still shows that flashes. So I mean, with it's kind of paid off, but it's kind of also bitten the, the Hawks in the ass because you know with the guys like that have so much offensive potential. You know, Peary's now on the the Ducks. I think he put up twenty nine points last year. Um, it, it's guys that Quinville doesn't b- truly truly believe in. I mean, it, it kind of could pay off. It kind of can't. So I mean, this is one that I don't think will pay off, but I understand the move again. And plus, we're going to be able to sign Panarin with that money. So that's, that's the Hawks another definitely upside. did this for the future. Mm-hmm. Uh, looking at their roster, and you know what they've been trying to—they've been maneuvering roster moves over and over again ever since they won their first cup in 2010. Yeah. So this isn't anything new for this organization, especially in management. But the thing is with this one, and I think it's—I think it's a necessary move, and it cost. You—you you said it before. In hindsight, 2020, Bickle, don't sign that deal. Got bad, you. very bad, and it cost you Tara Vinen, a very exciting young prospect with potential. But at the same time, with the Hawks and their per- current situation. You're not going to sign him, right? Because you have to invest in Panarin. Mm-hmm. And they brought back Ponick, which I like. And a lot of people and people who know hockey, who I trust and talk to closely, they say that Ponick can develop into a solid player. So Yeah, Ponick's got potential. Yeah. He had potential got size. with uh, Lightning. Yeah. And you know what? He did some nice things last year, so I'm excited to see him further. And they're trying to re-sign Shaw. 
Now, are they overvaluing Tra- uh, 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 Shaw now? Because, you know, you lost. Well, it sucks, too, because the cap is restricting them so much, and you have to pay Panarin an extra two and a half mil of incentives mm-hmm. because of how well he did. So the Hawks are just in a tough position. See, obviously with Panarin, I mean, it's it's without a doubt you need to sign the kid. The kid, his offensive potential and his repertoire with uh, with uh, Kane is just fantastic. So, I mean, there's there's no questioning there. And then I look at a guy like Andrew Shaw. And it, it Shaw, I mean, if you look at his, his production and you look at his potential... It's, he's not going to get any better. He's not going to get any better, but then again, if you look at him, and he, he obviously had a down season, but if you look at what he's done before in the playoffs and what he's done just from a kind of motivational speech, I mean, or not motivational <laughs> speech, but a motivational standpoint. And you look what, you know, we were talking earlier about the Cubs and how, you know, the catcher kind of runs the, the, the game here. Shaw is not really running the show. I mean, obviously Tazes, but if you look at Shaw, he's kind of that gritty, he's, well, he is that gritty player. He's that guy who gets along with the locker room. He's a guy who is a team player. And, you know, if he's not putting out a ton of points, he can still, you know, he get provides value, right. Yeah, he, he provides so much value with, with Bickle, Bickle was just a big body Ugh. who, I mean, we thought could, sucked in Rockford yeah. even. He had no well, value, this well, guy. All right, but, well, before we, we saw his, his his playoff performance, yeah, we were he, like, oh, well, this guy's going to be a stud. He had eight goals in 16 playoff yeah. games or something I mean, like that. It was, there, there's a difference where he didn't have any talent and it was really more right place, right time. With Shaw, he was he's usually right place, right time for scoring goals, but he, he provides a lot of uh, uh-huh. value on the power play. Uh, very gritty player. Yeah. Uh, very fast. I mean, Good on the floor sh- check. Now, this guy, I think this goes back to Joel Quenville and his... Uh, just his appreciation of specific guys, and I think he values Shaw a lot. And then they're now the management's making moves to keep him. I'm fine with I'm fine with keeping. Shaw. I like Shaw yeah, too. Yeah, yeah I think is, they I'm, should keep him. I'm fine with keeping Shaw. And if we're giving up Shaw and he's going to play on the third line, if it was really you know keep Teravine and play him on the third line, or keep Shaw and play him on the third line, without a doubt, it's give up Teravine and Pickle and, and and sign Shaw. It's it's it sucks seeing a guy like. Terrifying and go out of your grasp, and I hope I wish him yeah. all the best so, in Carolina. But it's going to be difficult to see Hawks him need to upgrade progress defensively. Oh, without a doubt, for sure. And they got to shore up some things. As long as they manage to keep Panarin, and if they re-sign Shaw, that'd be nice. But did you see that Brent Seabrook deal? Now that's going to kind of hurt them in the end. I know we don't have to get into it, but they signed him to a long-term extension for a decent amount of money. That's going to keep their cap up there for a while. 